So, of course, my mandate focuses on the right to life, um, and so I deal with different uh, um, contexts where there's either excessive use of force by the government or in other ways where uh, uh, use of lethal force may be in violation of international law. Um, so my previous reports have dealt with other issues, but drones has been one of the issues, and this is in a way a, a progression um, and a, a new issue, and of course with drones, in a way one is looking back and the genie is, so to speak, out of the bottle. Um, but with lethal autonomous robotics, there's the possibility of dealing with something in, a, in an anticipatory manner. Um, and I think that's important because the right to life deals with accountability if life is lost, but there's also the prevention component. Um, and I think this is an issue that should be looked at. And as you know, in my report, I then really call for the international community to have a, a pause and to consider really the implications of what this may eventually entail. The possible introduction of lethal autonomous robots is really a fundamental shift. Um, so we've had over the years development with weapons and the warriors using the weapons then, and these weapons becoming more powerful, in some cases more targeted. Uh, but th the shift here is really that the weapon becomes the warrior. Um, and there's no longer that distance and that, uh, uh, or actually that, that interaction between the human beings um, and other human beings, but the weapons themselves. There's a conflation of these. And I think before that happens, we need to consider it very carefully. Once it's done, um, there are all kinds of interests, uh, military interests, industrial interests, uh, also states that are facing security threats, um, I think use whatever is available. And it's very difficult once that has happened really to turn back the clock. Um, and I think at the moment we also have a situation where the major states using uh, technology and are in a position to use this kind of technology uh, are also recognizing that there is something that they need to be careful about. The United States, the UK as well, um, in different ways uh, have recognized uh, that this is not something that they should simply go into. Um, and I think that creates a situation before there's an arms race and all states start feeling, well, they need this to really keep up, um, where there's this uh, need and this possibility of a common reflection. Uh, once it's deployed, I think it's very difficult to go back. In one sense, it is, uh, um, it, it is remarkable that there's a large degree of, uh, um, of convergence on, on what are we talking about when we talk about lethal autonomous robots in the broadest sense that these are weapon systems uh, that uh, once deployed uh, can actually uh, locate and identify and eliminate uh, human targets without further human intervention. Having said that, there's of course a lot of disagreement on exactly what level autonomy we already have and what is full autonomy. Um, so in that respect, there is a, a, a wide degree of, of, of uncertainty to some extent also um, of what technology will eventually be able to do. Um, the reason why I got involved was I think largely because of drones and the fact that these are unmanned systems and the implications for states then without direct danger to their own people being able to cross borders and the increased targeted killing that takes place once these uh, weapons are available. Um, so my reports deal with different issues I've dealt with, uh, uh, demonstrations and arrest and the death penalty and so forth. Um, but I do think this is a unique opportunity to deal with a cutting edge issue. And in a way to say, yes, technology is important um, and technology in many cases save lives. I think if one looks at the technology that are involved in lethal autonomous robots, um, much of that is used, say, with the Google car and other ways in which um, human life can actually be be saved, but I think it's important to see to what extent technology uh, can actually uh, play a life-saving role and to what extent it is dangerous. And I think it's important that meaningful human uh, decision-making is retained over technology as well. So um, I would certainly not want to convey the impression that technology in itself is problematic. I think technology, like many other instruments, can be used for good and bad purposes. But I do think it is important that we recognize that in many cases we may be inclined to overestimate the power of technology um, because uh, uh, computers beat us at chess and at math. Uh, we sometimes tend to think, and also under the influence of popular culture, uh, we may think that, uh, that robots can take decisions which they are not really equipped to do. Uh, they are primarily uh, focused um, on quantitative uh, assessments um, and qualitative assessments, um, we should be careful about assuming that because they can do quantitative assessments, they can also do value judgments. Um, and that is where I think a meaningful human uh, control 
uh, remains important. And while we recognize the importance of technology and that it can be used for human purposes, we should not simply say whatever is technologically feasible should take its own course and we simply accept that. So in a way it's also a, a call for agency uh, that we decide what kind of world do we want to live in, um, what value do we put on life and also I think uh, for me important uh, is the human rights component of saying that um, the issue of dignity, to what extent is human dignity affected by a world in which we can potentially be just uh, collateral damage in the algorithms of, of a, a lethal autonomous robot. Well, I, I think there are potentially three kinds of approaches to be taken. One is to say uh, existing IHL and human rights law um, is adequate and it can deal with the situation. I think with drones, probably yes. Uh, I think uh, robots introduce a new dimension. And much of the assumption um, behind um, IHL is really that humans will take decisions. Uh, these are unspoken assumptions, um, but they are really the premise on which uh, the system is built. Um, so the first option is to say IHL will resolve the issue. Another option is to say it should be completely banned. A third option is to say there's some kind of middle way of uh, regulation um, and so forth. Um, but I do think uh, the, the issue of potential ban or regulation should be considered in an open manner. Um, because I'm not 100% sure that IHL, um, with its assumptions that humans should take the, the decisions, is adequate. Um, and also that uh, the commanders in the field are typically equipped to understand the technology that they may be deploying. It's already difficult for a, for a commander to deploy um, troops um, and to, who are also autonomous in, in, in a different sense. Um, but to add to that the complexity of, of um, uh, uh, assuming that commanders are, will be in a position to know whether um, robots can take certain kinds of decisions. I'm thinking in particular about uh, proportionality decisions, uh, distinction decisions. Um, I think that is problematic um, and, and certainly that needs to be investigated further. The, the message we get from governments um, is that they are um, careful about this. Um, at the same time, we know that with, with uh, aeroplanes in general, when they were first introduced, um, there was a wide agreement that this will probably lead to too much devastation to be used as, as weapons of war. Um, drones initially were also used for reconnaissance purposes, uh, but eventually the temptation becomes very strong. Um, and, and one can certainly understand from a military uh, starting point um, that the temptation is strong to use this kind of technology. And in the way that, that some of the existing um, weapon systems are built, um, they are built with dual purpose. Um, so at the moment they're not used for, for, for lethal purposes, uh, they're used for reconnaissance um, in particular, um, but it's a mere change of the switch or actually uploading um, the weapon systems that can make this available. And the danger, of course, is that uh, a, a significant threat or at least a perceived uh, security threat on a large scale uh, may then prompt uh, states uh, to use this. I think also the, um, the role of technology in our lives is such that uh, technology is incremental but it's relentless and it's actually moving very fast, um, although it's moving in small steps but very fast. Um, so I think the, to draw the line is, is, is quite difficult and one may be tempted to just go a little bit uh, further and a little bit further and one day you find yourself in a new world where these kinds of decisions are taken by machines. Civil society plays a role in, in alerting society in general to, to issues and I think this is happening here as well. And sometimes uh, the case is stated very strongly and so forth but I think that's all part of the process of, of drawing attention that something important is happening. Um, so I, I think the first role of civil society is, this, is the role of a watchdog. Um, and I think also in terms of my recommendations, high-level panel, I, I would certainly think civil society should be involved in that. I do find that the academic writings and the writings by NGOs on this topic, uh, that they're extremely useful. Um, it, also to, to identify the issue more clearly, because it's also possible in the same way that, uh, that we overestimate technology, uh, that there may be all kinds of expectations about things that, that uh, lethal autonomous robots may do that may not necessarily be really the, 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 the real threat. Um, so, so I do think in terms of this interaction with the debate, um, civil society is playing a, a very strong role. Also because uh, of the, um, I think, built into, uh, into states and the security apparatus of states, 
Uh, often their first concern is, is not so much the longer term, but they have an immediate threat that they try to deal with, and they try to be as strong as possible and they look at what their competitors do. Uh, so from their perspective, it often makes sense what they are doing, but in the larger picture, I think it's important for society to say there is a longer term perspective that should be kept in mind as well. What is it that we're trying to protect? Um, and I think to some extent we have to accept that technology already plays a role in life and death decisions. Um, and uh, I think the, the important point then is not to say, well, it's already playing that role, let's just surrender and let, let it do everything. Um, but one, some or other way of defining what is meaningful control. So the loop can be the very narrow loop of simply taking the lethal decision, or it could be the broader programming and, and the other aspects that go into the eventual deployment of, of lethal force. Um, and I think that identification of, of what would constitute uh, a meaningful human control, I don't think it's right to focus on the technology first, uh, because technology changes, it's very difficult to define and to, to, to really, uh, um, uh, uh, in a way, capture uh, what you want to do if you focus on the technology only. So it's more a functional approach that one should follow. And so um, the, the legal standards must be framed in such a way that meaningful control is given, uh, given content, and it must be content that can be implemented uh, in, in the battlefield. It must be implementable in terms of training. And I think the training component is also very important, um, is that, that there must be a proper understanding of technology and the role that it plays. Um, and both for the good purposes that technology can play and the, and the, and the harmful purposes that it should play. So I do think uh, uh, the, the training of, of, of operators and of commanders um, should in future also, whatever the outcome of this particular debate is, but to include more understanding of the role of technology. There are essentially two kinds of concerns. One I would, would see almost as, as technical concerns and the extent to which technology can meet a certain standard, um, and that of course changes over time. And then there's also the principal question, um, the one whether it's in principle acceptable uh, that machines can take decisions uh, concerning uh, the killing of, of individuals. Um, and this is very different with the drones debate, and I think it's, it's, it's dangerous that people in a way conflate the two as well, because this is, this is really the distinguishing factor of, of uh, lethal autonomous robots, that they can take these autonomous uh, decisions. Um, and that is where, where I think it's important to, to assess the role of, of, of um, what the public conscience really is and, and what, the, um, what the principal issue uh, at stake is and, and, and in, in respect then of human decision making over life and death, exactly what do we understand under that.